Welcome to Daron Yoga, everybody. Today we're gonna to work on a gentle wrist class, meaning it's still gonna be the full yoga class, but we'll try to use the wrist a bit less. We have these days where we just did a lot of arm balances the day before, and we need a day to take a gentle. We'll still try to play around and have fun, okay? So bring the hands to the heart for just one quick second. Take a deep breath. A little smile. Great, open the eyes. We'll come on to the hands and knees. So to begin with, anytime we're on the wrist, you can be on the fists or on the fingertips. These are really two great options. You'll see Kasha and I taking different variations of different things. I'll take more on the fist. We'll see how it goes. Right now, we'll start with a bit of deliciousness. So again, you can be on the hands, fists or fingertips, moving the hips up and down and all around, moving a bit the head, neck, shoulders, and reverse the direction, please. If you can, activate your ujjayi breath. Begin to notice the breath moving through the nose, through the slightly restricted throat, creating a soft sound. Coming back to neutral, downward puppy. Keep the hips over the knees, arms forward. Head down towards the ground. If it's easy enough, chin down. And anytime we take downward dog, you can take downward puppy. You can also go right now to downward dog or anytime you want. Downward dog is actually nice for the wrist and it's not a sharp angle. Look between the hands, bring the right foot forward between the hands, lower the left knee down for a low lunge. Staying here, hands can be down on the knee or maybe even on the hips. Rediscovering your ujjayi breath, really letting the soft sound soothe you. Almost like the ujjayi breath is a lullaby, not putting you to sleep, but actually helping you to be present to awaken from the chattering mind. Keep the chest lifted, the forehead relaxed. Good, one more breath. We're gonna straighten the front leg. I'm gonna be on the fingertips. You don't have to put much weight on the hands. You can even keep them on the hips. Just very gentle forward fold, warming up our hamstrings. Beautiful. I'm gonna make it back to downward dog, so step it back. Again, you can skip the vinyasa, go right away, downward dog, fists, hands down, or forearms. Bringing the left foot forward, the right knee down. Starting here for a moment with the low lunge. Finding your position, whatever works. Keep the breath alive. Maybe activating a bit in your bandhas. Lift the belly slightly in and up. Lift the pelvic floor. One more breath here. And then straightening the left leg. Breathing all the while. Beautiful. We're making our way again into the downward facing dog. Just step it back. Good. A little bit of extra work here, and you can do one of the two things just to warm us up since we'll do less vinyasas. The right elbow goes down, the left elbow goes down, the right elbow up, the left elbow up. Let's do this a few times. Right elbow down, left elbow down, right elbow up, left elbow up. Just a few more. Keep going, moving with your breath. Right up, left up, right down. Lift down, up, up. Pause for a second and switch. First left side down, then right side. Left up, right up. Left down, right down. Left up, right up. Keep breathing, keep moving. If it's too much, by all means, I forgot to say, lower down the knees. You can do the same thing with the knees down. Last round and meeting in downward facing loveliness. I'm gonna walk the feet to the front of the mat. And forward fold, you can hold the elbows here so there's no pressure on the arms. 
Bend the knees as much as you need to and really relax the head. Bend the knees a little more, relax the hands, slowly rolling all the way up to standing. Once you reach the top, just take a few circles with the head and neck. Other direction, whenever you're ready. Good. And we'll meet in the center. We'll take a few shoulders, rolling back the shoulders. Maybe add some wrist circles as you roll them back. That'll move the elbows a bit more. Looks funny, huh? It's okay. You can smile. You can laugh. No judgment. Release. We're going to go the other direction. Shoulders forward. Elbows forward. Eventually adding the wrists. Good. And pausing, shake it away. Okay. We're going to try and do just the first three vinyasas of Sun Salute. So without jumping back. Yekam, inhale, arms up, gaze up. Dwe, exhale, forward fold, bend the knees as much as you need to. Trini, lengthen, inhale. Chatwari, sorry, no chatwari. Exhale, back to Dwe. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. One more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. This time we may take a little bit of a back bend just to again warm up the spine instead of all the upward dogs. And exhale, closing. One last time, the same thing. Inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold, inhale, up, and maybe a bit back or a lot back, and slowly close, shake it away, sun salute B, pretending, bending the knees, inhale, hold for three, two, one, exhale, forward, fold, inhale, lengthen, Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Or to Utkatasana. And Samastiti here. Good. We're going to step the left foot back. Starting with a high lunge. So lift the back heel up if you can. If it's too much, just lower the left knee down so you're in low lunge. Lower the hips. Press the back leg. Tuck the belly slightly in. Hands may remain on the hips. Maybe they go up to the sky. Your choice. Couple more breaths. Adding a little twist here. Hands to the heart. Twist to the right. Inhale. Arms come back to the heart. And step the left foot to the front. Release. Back inside. So this time we're going to step the right foot back into the high lunge. Feel free to move your left foot to the left side to gain more stability. And then if it feels reasonable for you, arms up. If not, just keep them down. Take a few breaths in the high lunge, lowering the hips, pulling the belly in. Maybe, maybe looking up. Your choice. And taking a twist from here. So slowly turning over to the left side. Then using a bit of the breath as you inhale a bit taller. As you exhale, twist a little deeper. Keep breathing. Inhale, hands to the heart and step it to the front. Okay, release, shake it away. Beautiful. We're going to go to warrior one. So left foot steps back. Hips adjust forward. Finding your warrior for a moment here. And then again, maybe adding the arms up. Take a moment here. We're going to do B3 because it's so lovely. Right arm wraps underneath the left. 
reach forward and then keep the hips low, go back, opening the heart space, lifting the elbows and breathing. Inhale, the arms back up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Step the right foot over to the right. And we're gonna lower the arms down to the mat. Left knee down and back. And then we're gonna either stay here, this is one option. Most of us will open the right knee to the side and lower the forearms down to the ground. If the forearms are not reaching the ground, feel free to place a block, a pillow, whatever you can underneath the forearms so that it's not, and not too intense for you. The arms very relaxed, very soft. We'll take here a few breaths, and if you want, you can even close your eyes and see if you can, beyond the intensity of the hips, just send healing wishes to your wrist, even if they're just a little sore, why not? If it gets too easy, walk the arms forward. If it's intense, stay up. Most importantly, stay with your breath. One more breath. Beautiful. Slowly, slowly coming back up. Coming up onto your hands just for a second. The right foot up. Stay as you are. And we're going to take a little twist here. So you can bring the left knee a little forward. The left hand down. The right arm up. You can be on the fingertips. You can be on a block. It's a good reminder to use your core so that there's very little weight on your left hand. Beautiful, the right hand comes down. We somehow need to make our way to the front. So as gracefully as you can, we'll step the left foot to meet the right. And exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up, maybe arms over the head. And exhale, samastiti here. We'll step the right foot back into the warrior one. Adjust the hips, bend the knee, pull the belly in, maybe arms up. B3, left arm underneath the right. Reaching forward and then go back. Keep breathing. Inhale back to the warrior. Exhale slowly, hands to the heart. The left foot to the left, hands slowly down. The right knee back and down, opening the left knee to the side and lowering the forearms to whatever form feels reasonable for you. Notice if you tend to collapse down, it's okay. But try to see if you can maintain without too much effort the length of the spine, the softness in the shoulders and the neck, the softness in the face and the jaw. Keep feeling the breath passing through the slightly restricted throat, your ujjayi breath, and surrender your mind. Extending our exhales here is also amazing because it helps us transition into the parasympathetic system, which is our healing system, right? We can be there, the body knows it's safe, there's no tiger or urgent email, and we can actually soften and allow our body to heal itself. So we're going to make our way to the twist, so slowly coming back up. Left foot on the ground, right knee moves a little closer. And again, hand on the ground, fist on the ground, whatever works for you. Opening, twisting from the thoracic spine, left arm up, 
Maybe gaze up, maybe not. See what feels reasonable for you. Great. Hand down. Step it to the front. Lengthen. And exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, samastiti heel. Good. Last one. We're going to step again the left foot back into, you can go warrior, let's go warrior one. We'll do our before version. And then from here, we're going to slowly open warrior two. Good. From here, take another breath. One breath in reverse. I lied, at least two breaths. Back to warrior two. Your choice, side angle, elbow or forearm on the thigh, left arm over the head. If you want, still no wrist, but a lot more work. Both arms parallel to each other. Your choice, just hold for three, two, one, back up to the warrior two, straightening the front leg, reaching forward, trikonasana. You can shorten the distance, Ashtanga style, or keep this length. Either way, there's no weight on the bottom arm. Maybe looking up if it's okay for you. If it's too much, look to the side or look down. Good. Release the left hand to the hip. Look forward, bend the front knee. We're going to step it to the front. Second side, stepping the right foot back, adjusting your hips forward to warrior one. Exhale, slow motion, open warrior two. Take a breath here. Reaching forward, reverse the warrior. Can you hear the sound of your ujjayi breath? Back to the warrior two. Uttita Parshva Konasana, extended side angle. Again, forearm may stay down on the thigh, amazing, or ninja version, both arms up. Breathing for three, two, one. Inhale, back up, warrior two. Straightening the front leg, shorten or not. Reaching forward, and then left hand down, wherever it may be. Right arm to the top. And see Kasha is taking the Ashtanga version. Opening the heart space. Beautiful. Right hand to the hip. Look forward. Step it to the front. Samastiti. Shake it away. Right. Prasarita. Opening to the side, whatever leg feels good for you today. Yeah. Hi, Kasha. Okay. Clasp your hands. Hopefully this doesn't feel bad on your wrists. If it does, just keep them on the hips. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. C. So we'll just do only C today. If it's too much, you can hold a strap between the hands. If you need a little more space for your shoulders. Allow your head to release down. You don't even need to shake it. Just really let it be. All right, pull the belly in. Two more deep breaths. And we're going to power the legs with one big inhale coming all the way forward and up. Release the hands. We're going to step it to the front of the mat. And release. And then shake it away. Good. So we won't take the Parshvottanasana regular. We will step the right foot back. And if you want to, you can do the reverse namaste, not a problem. If it's hurting you, just hold the elbows. We're going to step the right foot back behind, adjust the hips forward for pyramid Parshvottanasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, slowly forward, fold. Keep the breath alive. Keep the hips as square as you feel they are. Inhale, slowly coming up. 
steady the mind, right knee forward in the air, release, left foot back, hips adjust to the front, inhale, lengthen, exhale, slowly forward, fold, see if you can relax in the toes a little bit, some of us tend to grip, press the hips back and reach the sternum forward, How are the legs? Chest forward, slowly coming all the way up. Left knee forward and release. Good. Release it on. Take uh, one standing balancing here. We'll do cappuccino today. So we're going to take the right ankle on top of the left thigh, close to the knee, hands to the heart. If it feels good for you to do the reverse like this for stretching the ribs, the wrist, hips go back and down, back and down. Good. Breathing. Slowly we'll make our way back up. Release the hands, release the leg. Second side. Hips back and down. Slowly inhale up and release. Good. Shake it away. We're going to go to the ground. So take your feet about hip width apart. Move even a little further back on your mat because we're going for a modified crow pose. Slowly start to lower down. Hips move back and down. Knees stay somewhat in parallel to each other all the way down. So this is a bit uh, funny, but just try it. It works. So, if you want to do crow, great, but the whole idea is no wrist, so it means forearms. It means that you have to squat quite deeply. Maybe for some of us it just means knee tapping, and for some of us it will mean knee hugging, shifting weight forward, eventually knees onto the armpit. The chest has to be open, the gaze way forward, and balancing. I know you're close to the ground, it's nice, you can smell your mat. Hopefully you use lavender essence to clean it. One more breath and lower down. Step it back into dolphin. So you're on your forearms and you reach back. It's kind of like downward dog with forearms down. You pull the belly, you stay here for a couple of breaths. Here you go from dolphin, stay here or walk the feet closer if you want more intensity. This can get really intense. So if you need to, you can lower the knees or stay here. Or if you want, follow Kasha with one leg up into the sky at a time. Or if you have the Pincha Mayurasana, keep the gaze looking forward and slowly work on coming up to balance or half balance in the Pincha Mayurasana. Hold here for a few breaths. Lower down when you need to. You can hold down another few breaths or lower down to child's pose. Take a moment to finish either your pincha one leg at a time or child's pose. And then slowly coming forward, we're going to lower down to the belly. Starting with Shalabhasana, both arms forward, right leg up, left arm up, hold. Switch. Left leg up, right arm up, hold. Lower down, take one breath here. Good. Bend the knees. We're going to take Dhanurasana. Lift the chest, lift the legs, breathing. release down. Take a moment here. If you want a little extra back bend, you can take Sphinx. So forearms down again, pulling the chest forward and through, shoulders back. Very nice, everybody. We're going to come to our back bends. So 
and we're skipping a bit of a deep stretch, but we've not done something too crazy today. So you're just gonna lift up in a very simple way. Make your way up into Kamalicious Ustrasana. Okay, so Ustrasana, you may have the hand down, but hopefully even if the hand is down, right, there's not much weight on it. You keep lifting the chest so you can check and make sure that really your back beds, your hands are effortless. So sometimes it's good to have some soreness in the wrist. I'm joking. Here we go. We'll start with regular Ustrasana. Chest up, lower down, hands may just stay on the hips, may go to the toes where the toes are tucked under, or maybe the toes are untucked. From here, eventually let go of the head, keep lifting in the chest so you can feel really no pressure on the hands. Either way, you can even have the fingertips down so the wrists are completely out of the picture. Inhale, coming up, head is last. Take a moment in child's pose. You can even take child's pose while releasing wrists. Coming right back up, we're going to do it one side at a time. Chest up, right hand down, left arm up, and over. If this is too intense for you, do whatever we did before, or keep the hands on the hips. Eventually, if you can, allow the head to go back. Press the left hip forward. The left hand goes slightly towards the right. Smile, we're not watching. Inhale, come up, and we'll switch sides. Right arm up, left arm down, hips press forward. Keep breathing. Inhale, slowly coming up. Just a quick moment in child's pose. On the last one, you have quite a few options. You can do any one of the ones we just did now, probably camel. For those of you that have deeper back bends, only if you have deeper back bends and your back is strong enough, you can bring the hands to the heart and just take here, right? We're working towards kapotasana. You have full kapotasana, please do it, but only if you know you've done it before. So chest is lifted, head back. And again, for this, this is way more intense already. Option 27. Hands to the forearms. If you're starting to have a hard time breathing, stay there or back off. Full version, arms over the head, eventually down to the ground. Eventually forearms down to the ground. Walking towards your feet. To come up whenever you're ready, you press the hands for a second and then lift head last, all the way up, taking child's pose. Inhale, slowly coming up. Let's do a couple of twists. What do you feel like today? Ardha Matsyandrasan. Sure, she said. Left knee bends. Right ankle goes over the left thigh. The chest lifts. If it's too hard to straighten the back, sit on the block, twisting over to the right side. Either hugging or going over, twisting to the right. Kasha is doing the slightly more stanga version. We're holding the leg. I'm just keeping it up in the air. If a mudra makes you feel happy, take a mudra. Take your drishti or gaze over to the right. Finding Ujjayi breath again and again. Back to center. Inhale. Release. Take the other side. Nice, this gentle on the wrist. No so many vinyasas. Life is good. I, I think I'll do this class anytime. I just feel like taking it not so, super strong as well. Ready? So again, my right knee is bent, my left leg over. Lifting the chest, lengthening in the spine and twisting. The arm variation of choice.
Trying to keep both sitting bones on the ground. Inhale back to center, release. So those of you that know the Doron Yoga building blocks know I skipped the um, deep stretch. So we'll at least do a little longer Baddha Konasana as a replacement because we can't skip it. So feet together, knees to the side, opening the feet as much as you can. By all means, if you need to sit on a block, if you're very rounding on the back, sit on a block. Belly forward, chest forward, staying here or lowering to the place that is wherever your hips will allow you to, right? Interesting to think how many times we believe this body is ours. Really, the body, similar to a car we own, is kind of ours, but it obeys a bit less than a car does. If we take good care of it, the hips will open, it will do what we need it to do. If we don't take good care of it, well, it will resist. Inhale, slowly coming up. We're going to transition right into a one-legged forward fold. So just simply straighten the left leg. Keep the right foot as it is. Adjust the spine, lengthen, and forward fold, Jana Shurshasana A. For those of you that come to Jana Shurshasana A and feel nothing and you want to take either a half lotus, you can try this one. really intensifies for me when I do the Kung Fu version, the right ankle, right before the knee. Wherever you are, take a few breaths, soften in the shoulders, in the head and neck. Inhale, slowly coming up. We're going to switch sides, so the right leg straightens. Most likely you're in Janu Shurshasana A, the left foot to the thigh, forward folding. If you have taken the other version, the Kung Fu version, feel free to go for that and then slowly forward fold. Allow your exhales to deepen. Allow healing to happen. Slowly coming up. I'm going to take both legs forward into Paschimottanasana. Slightly pull the belly in and up, chest forward. And then surrendering, finding a sense of ease. Inhale, slowly coming up. We're going to close with a modified version. We're just going to lay on the back with legs up for a few breaths. You can put them up against the wall. We're going to lower to a supine Baddha Konasana and take a short Shavasana. So join us. If you have a block and you want to place a block underneath your hips, if you feel good in shoulder stand, feel free to take shoulder stand. Otherwise, just here, the legs up. Hands can be beside the body or whatever feels good for you, on the belly, whatever works. You can either keep the eyes steady on the toes without analyzing, just being present, or if it feels good for you to close the eyes, you're welcome to do so. Awareness of the breath.
Just a few more breaths here, staying present. Okay. We're gonna lower the knees towards the chest, feet together, knees open up to the side, similar to the Baddha Konasana we've just done a few moments ago. Just laying down, allow yourself to begin to release as if you're going into the full Shavasana. This will be part of our Shavasana. If it's too intense, you can just simply straighten the legs right into Shavasana. Straightening the legs if you haven't already. Allow the palms to face up. Okay, just a short one, so really allow yourself to melt away. Exhale here. If you'd like to stay longer in Shavasana, please do so. We're going to slowly come out. So slowly you can find your way to sit up, bend the knees. Some people like to roll on to the right. Some people like to roll up to sit. By all means, you're welcome to stay for a little meditation. Just take at least a few breaths to send gratitude to your wrists. For all that they support and all that they do. We definitely thank you for being here with us today. Hopefully you enjoyed class. Let us know. Leave us a comment. How's it going? Share this with other people that you know can use a little bit of a gentler class for the wrists. Until next time, namaste.